So right here we have the Tina 2 3D printer. As you can see here, it's doing the print. But today, not sponsored at all, I bought the whole entire printer with my own money. Um, today I'll just be printing it for fun because I just got it and I want to show you guys what I have done so far. So yeah, we have, it's an FDM printer. So it's like a very small printer, but it does the trick. So here we have our SD card with all the info. And here, there's not much to talk about with the screen, but here's it's just an info screen. Right here would tell us on the, all the info, so I'm going to get articulated on this. Um, they have a tuning system right here. And I put the speed at max. The max speed is 200. You can do the bed speed, you can do the flow, you can probe Z also, which means kind of reset it at home. If we move down, we can pause the print. If we go to LED control, we can turn it off. And that turns the printer light off, but we want it on. We're gonna go back to LED control. We're gonna have it on right there. And the final info is there's stop print and there's save printing and off, which it has save printing, which means that like you can stop the print and save it, and then later on, later it'll um, it'll keep on going, which is very cool in my opinion. And here we have two plugs. One, this one right here, it goes down. It's a power supply and I mean it turns it on and off and it's connected to the wall. And then the other one, this one right here, it has this. You connect this to your computer and it has a custom Wii Builder software and a custom Kira, but I don't really use the custom Kira, I use the Wii Builder. And um, and you just connect it to your computer. So, so if we open the Wii Builder software right here that it has, it's pretty garbage if you ask me. I mean, you can't even make shapes. There's this, I mean, and you can't really make shapes. And there's this, there's this. I mean, this is a G-code editor, in which I don't know why you'd use it. Object editor, I mean, can't really do stuff with it. Just do this. Just, I mean, let's say I wanna, can't really do much. I mean, what I do sometimes is I find files. I close this, go to here, load file. Let's say I want this Snorlax. See right here, it loaded, so we're gonna rotate it a little bit. Like, let's say we want it like this. Let's, actually, wait, let's move it. So, I got the Snorlax down, and now what we're gonna do, so we're gonna go here, we're gonna go to Slice. It's gonna say Slicing 2D Object. See, now it's fully sliced. And down in the corner, it'll tell us the print time. This, this is the print time. It'll tell us how many grams it uses. It won't tell us how much money it costs, but it will tell us how many grams. Um, and yeah, so basically that's the slicing software. It's actually pretty track. If you ask me, and to print it, you need to connect the printer and then do this. You gotta go to, uh, you gotta choose the printer. So you need to connect it to your port, but basically, yeah, that's kind of the software as it is. So that's the slicer for you. So as you can see on some of the prints, you can see some layering, you can see some layers. And that is due to the fact that this printer runs on one fan. Yes, one fan. This printer is very quiet. I actually fell asleep once while it was going because it has a quiet mode. And for a $250 printer, quiet mode is insane. And this printer, sure, it may have the layers and the layers may not be the best. But in my opinion, for a $250 printer, I'm fine with layering. I got what I wanted and even more because this printer is just so amazing. So to sum it up, for the value of this $250 that I spent, I'd say it's worth every single one of my pennies, even more. I've sold a bunch of different prints to all my friends and they generally say that they love the prints and they love how cute they are. And generally, if I had to rate this printer, I'd say it's amazing.